understand it's just after lunch now, so I apologise for all of the rustling, and hopefully this will be a good, fun, energetic way for us to get back into the swing of things. So I know we actually just had a little bit of a confusion about exactly how to pronounce the name here, which is quite fortunate, but I have heard it pronounced quite a few different ways. There's T-U-I, which is quite a popular way of naming it. There's also 2-E, and then my personal favourite, Chewy. <laughs> but of all of these different names of what you could call it, the correct one is indeed Tui. So I'm here from Tui. I'm here to tell you a little bit about analytics in the business, what we should do in a changing world, because there's all sorts of different things which happen, all sorts of things that need to be taken into account with analytics, and hopefully give you a little bit of an insight about exactly what we do. So if we can, there we go. As the world changes, what is important is that the analytics should as well. We go back maybe 10, 15 years ago, everyone was using Excel, people were using various different tools, a lot of it was still done by hand. And you look at people just reading aloud different Excel spreadsheets, you see people just like lists and lists of numbers over hundreds and hundreds of pages. And is that really what we need? Uh, technology has moved on. If you think about the advance of technology in the past five, 10 years, it's only 10 years ago that we had YouTube and Amazon, for example. Then why shouldn't analytics move along with the times? This is a map of the UK, as I hope most people here recognise. And it's just coloured in uh, based on one of the projects which I've been working on recently. So that's at a postcode level of the data which we have. We are able to do the analysis at that sort of granular level. You can type in exactly where the postcode is. I understand a little bit like Google, Google Earth. You can go anywhere in the UK, but the first place everyone wants to look at is their home address. So you can do that, it gets people engaged a little bit more because it's not just bar charts and line graphs, it's something which is a bit more interactive, a little bit more fun, and something which, in terms of analytics, we can do to really add value because most people haven't seen something like that before in a business. So how do we do that? Well, we need to use a variety of different tools in order to create one aligned outcome. So most people here probably have heard of R or have used R in some sort of capacity. I know I did it quite a bit at university. Uh, had mixed feelings about it myself, but actually it's quite a useful tool. So all of those hours of uh, coursework at university obviously paid off in the end. Another tool which we use quite a bit is SQL. So maybe some people here have heard of SQL. It's just a, a query language. We have a big database which sits in the background with a lot of different information. We need to match that up. We need to join different databases together at different times. So we use that as a way of extracting all of the data in one quite clean, quite concise fashion. Another one we use, which maybe people haven't heard of so much, is Alteryx. This is a, uh, very much an analytical tool. It's used for forecasting, quite advanced analytics. So you look at uh, like tree analysis, and then you have a look at forests, and all sorts of difficult, confusing analytical terms, which I haven't come across, but I'm informed release some sort of magic whenever you manage to combine them together. And it looks pretty when you look at it at the end, and you can say, oh, actually, there is some sort of pattern in what looked to be just a cloud of nonsense. There is actually some really clear clusters. There is some really clear patterns at the back of it. We also use Adobe Marketing Cloud. So this is a collection of different tools, which analytics is one, obviously, in an analytics scheme, which is used most commonly. But there's also ones like social and target, so we can send out different tools to different people, to different parts of the business, so we can really see different levels of information which we might not have done before. That funky looking symbol over there is Tableau. That's what helped to produce the graph which you saw on the previous slide. This is less analytics, this is more visualization of the data. So this is, you've gone to R, you've fed it through Alteryx, you've now got Tableau. So it's a very clear sort of pattern of where you go, of what you do within the business. It's sort of quite obvious the way that you use it. Makes things look pretty, makes things look a little bit more modern than just sort of like your average Excel spreadsheet or PowerPoint. Something that really grabs people's attention. And then, I know I said that maybe we should move off of it, but Microsoft Office, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, they are quite crucial tools still in the business. An awful lot of my time, even though we have all of these new funky looking tools, quite fun, quite energetic, Office is often what a lot of it boils down to. So what, in my opinion, should analytics be? And what is analytics of Intui? Well, what's important is that we need to look at the things no one else is, and we need to do things that no one else can. If we just regurgitate facts which people already know, then is that analytics? Is that operational research? Is that us really getting information? No, the, the initiative have to be taken. So 
if someone was to send a request, if someone was to send some information for some data, you could run it, you could get it out, and you could send them exactly what they asked for. But what we're trying to do now is trying to say, well, what else does that lead on to? You create a graph like this, and then you look at it, and you think, oh, there's some spikes there. What's causing those spikes? What's causing the drops? What's causing that change? Then, even though this might have been the only question which was asked, we can then drill into it a little bit more. We can look behind those figures using Tableau. We can look behind the information, get it out of Alteryx, and we can say, we've seen that drop, but we've seen it because of this, and this is what we need to change, and perhaps I wouldn't have been visible without this adventure or just sort of like learning adventure which you go on with every single piece of analysis and operational research which we do within the company. And what I really want to get across is it doesn't need to be boring. It doesn't need to be all bar charts, pie charts, line graphs. That isn't, I know you look at analytics, you look at the typical people think maths or it's sort of like, it's all very confusing, there's lots of funky symbols, there's lots of weird words, people saying all sorts of things I don't understand. It's our job to make it understand in operational research. We need to do the work, but we need to present it in a way that people can understand. The world is changing, and we need to ensure that we are changing with it. This is something which I'm sure confuses the vast majority of people here. It confuses me as well, so don't worry about that. But this is basically the exact same thing we saw on the map of the UK, but this is what it looks like at the start. So this is the data which we saw, which was then fed into the map. So you look at this and you think, well, that's not really telling me anything, is it? It's just sort of like different coloured bars, little, little size differences. Some of them are quite big on the left. They get quite small on the right, so they sort of fade away into nothingness. And all different colours, but what does that really say? It's only when we take this and then map it to the UK, we use that extra functionality which we can get from being analysts, and then we really get something quite meaningful, quite powerful out of it. And that, what, that is what needs to be done, because... An awful lot of people probably is like, oh, it's analytics. You send them over a 20-page PowerPoint presentation or like a PDF and just got graphs and graphs and numbers and numbers and people talk through it. And you can see people glaze over like, oh, not another one of these. And people might be in meetings which have dozens of them all the time. We are moving to a point now where that is not enough. We need to think about what can we do to add that extra value? What can we do in order to make it engaging for people, get something which they don't understand? But I think the most important thing is that analytics needs to be something which interests you. It needs to be something which you find enjoyable, something which you find quite fun. This is a picture of me and a couple of the other people on the team. We took this when we was at one of our away days. So it was a good day. It was something that was a nice team building activity. We are quite a tight team. We can't do all the work by one person. We can't do it all by ourselves. We need to ensure that we have the correct network of people around us. We need to make sure that it's the right people who can help us. Because math mathematicians, analysts, we aren't going to know everything right off the bat. There is going to be some things which we need to do. Like I say, it's a big learning adventure. It's a big idea that we need to create, and we're only going to create that by coming up with new things. We're going to only create that by making mistakes, doing things which other people haven't. And to do that, you need to have confidence in the team. You need to be a team player need to add that little bit of extra detail to it, which other people perhaps wouldn't be able to. And by doing that, that is how we can really drive analytics forwards in the business. Like I say, there has been a variety of different projects. I've been working with the company now for about 15 months. I've been in two different rotations. I worked in digital, did a lot of marketing there, and now I've come up to the customer team, so that's more focused on the actual people who go on the holiday. So whereas before I was maybe looking at the way people get to the website. Now we're looking more at people have made the bookings. Who are they? How are they enjoying their holiday? How can we make it more personalised to them? How can we make the experience just better overall for everyone involved? So it feels as though we're actually making real positive change. If we can see figures, for example, in the database, which suggest, oh, this customer segment, this group of people aren't enjoying it. Why aren't they enjoying it? What can we do in order to make them enjoy it more? Because we are a holiday company at the end of the day. People go on holiday to get away from stress. They go on holiday to stop worrying about things. They go on holiday to escape. If people are coming back and have had delayed flights, have had a bad experience in resort, they've had all sorts of issues, it's, it's us who need to look at what's causing that problem. We need to drill down into that data in order to make, it, make sure it doesn't happen again and do something to make sure that these people actually have fun. It's quite an easy thing to get quite passionate about holidays. Everyone loves a holiday. Everyone likes going to... Spain, Cyprus, Spain, Cyprus, Greece, 
Turkey, Canary Islands, uh, go uh, wherever it might be. Everyone enjoys that. Everyone likes going away somewhere. So it's not too difficult. And you actually feel as though you're making people's lives better, making them happier by doing something outside of the norm. So that's something which, for me, is quite interesting and quite, quite powerful. So, yeah, that was sort of most of what I wanted to talk about, just sort of a, be a brief overview of where we're going with the company in terms of analytics, sort of who we are, what we do. And, yeah, hopefully, uh, I know a lot of people here have already been to the stand, they've already seen some of what we do already, so, but if anyone wants to, we're sort of just... It's quite easy to spot us, we've got the big inflatables out front, so hopefully you can see that one. Yeah, thank you for listening, thank you for coming. Happy to answer any questions now.